Welcome to planet Earth, a tiny speck of life in the vastness of space. This is our home, fragile and special. More than 50 years ago, humans started to venture into space and saw our planet like never before. Space exploration opened our eyes to a new perspective. The International Space Station is the biggest structure ever built in space. It's permanently inhabited, with six people currently calling it home. It circles the Earth at 28,000 kilometers per hour, 400 kilometers above your heads. The size of a football field, this orbiting outpost is a shining example of global cooperation uniting Europe, the USA, Russia, Japan and Canada in space since 1998. Now let's fly a bit closer. On the left we have the Columbus Laboratory, Europe's major contribution to space science research. Then we come across Harmony, a connecting module where visiting spacecraft can dock. Next to it there is Kibo, Japan's laboratory in space with a large external platform for experiments. Moving along the backbone of the station, or what we call the truss, is the Canadian robotic arm. This 17-meter robot has been instrumental in the building of the station. It can handle large payloads, move astronauts around, and even capture visiting vehicles. Flying down, we see a few American modules. The largest one is the research lab, Destiny. And next to it are the connecting modules, Unity and Tranquility. Facing down, it's Leonardo, a multi-purpose module. You can also see a seven-porthole dome called Cupola. From there, astronauts guide operations outside the station and take stunning pictures of our planet. To continue our tour, we'll move to the Russian side of the station. Here we can have a look at a Soyuz spacecraft docked. This vehicle is currently the only means for up to three astronauts to reach and leave the station. It serves as a lifeboat in case the crew have to return to Earth. The Soyuz has been used for human spaceflight missions since 1967, longer than any other spacecraft. Time to have a tour inside the station. Let's move to the joint airlock, the main gate for spacewalks. Passing through the hatch, we'll get into a pressurized module called Quest, where astronauts get ready to leave the station or get back to it. The station is a labyrinth. It's not easy to orient yourself in weightlessness. There is no up or down in space. Here we are in Destiny, the American Research Laboratory. It supports a wide range of experiments and scientific studies. We now move through the connecting module Harmony towards Columbus. Let's get in and have a look. Europe's state-of-the-art facility has room for 10 racks, squeezing the maximum amount of research from the available space. Each rack is devoted to different scientific areas. Experiments are performed in biology, human physiology, radiation, material science and fluid physics. European scientists have remote access to this very special orbiting facility and are producing scientific results for our benefit back on Earth. Just opposite Columbus, we find Kibo, the Japanese laboratory. From here, we can see its hatch at the end, used to transfer experiment facilities to outer space. Next to the airlock, there is a robotic workstation. The crew can prepare the hardware and experiments and put them in the airlock like an ESA astronaut is doing here. After the inner hatch is closed, the robotic arm on the outside can collect the payload and place it onto the external platform.
Everything floats inside the station. Astronauts and any objects aboard are all orbiting the Earth in a free-fall state. That makes a lot of tasks easier, but it has its downsides as well. Astronauts need to stay fit in space. They have to exercise every day to counteract the adverse effects of microgravity. Bones, heart, lungs and muscles all lose mass and tone in weightlessness. All these changes are tracked and monitored by storing samples of blood, urine or saliva in a minus 80 degrees freezer. In microgravity, they can play with objects like this gyroscope and learn about complex physical laws. A number of activities educate and inspire students all over the world. They can program their own space droids that hover around using their own propulsion and navigation. Or they can learn about how surface tension on water works in space. The crew exercises on a very particular treadmill. They need to be attached to it to not fly away when running. Astronauts must keep a tight training schedule of two hours a day. But how do astronauts see Earth from up there? Let's have a look. Hovering through the connecting modules Unity and Tranquility, we arrive at the cupola. This seven-window dome is the crew's vantage point to Earth. It offers a unique view for observing our living planet, complementing the data generated by satellites. Here, we can see a volcano in New Zealand, chains of mountains in Argentina, and the Grand Canyon. From the cupola, they can assist their crewmates during extravehicular activities, the technical term for spacewalks. Astronauts need to put a spacesuit on before venturing outside. A spacesuit is a small spacecraft in itself. It provides astronauts with oxygen to breathe and protects them from harmful radiation and the extreme temperatures outside. Astronauts do spacewalks to add new modules, install experiments and carry out repairs. Spacewalks are also a unique opportunity to see the Earth as never before in all its beauty and fragility. Without spacewalks, life would not be possible on the orbital outpost. The bay windows of the cupola offer the best panoramic view of our world. These windows are protected by external shutters, which are closed when not in use to protect the glass from micrometeoroids and orbital debris. From the inside, the views of Earth and the space station often help astronauts monitor and control approaching spacecraft. Even for astronauts, it's easy to lose orientation when moving around through the modules of the ISS. Signs on the walls help us on our way back through the nodes Tranquility and Unity. We'll now visit the Russian side of the International Space Station. On the way, we find an astronaut having a drink while working. We'll now fly through Zarya, primarily used for cargo storage and as a docking port, but also as a bathroom. Space bathrooms are rather different from the ones you have on Earth. There is no shower on board, so astronauts have to take sponge baths and use wet wipes and non-rinse shampoo. No wonder the first thing most astronauts want to do when they land on Earth is take a shower. We're approaching Zvezda, the main core module of the Russian segment. This module serves as living quarters and the main canteen. Here is where astronauts gather for their meals. They have a fancy table with lots of compartments for food and cutlery. Food is usually eaten directly from cans or flexible bags. From time to time, the crew get to taste fresh fruit. As you can see, astronauts have a busy schedule and might have to work over lunch. They're in constant contact with control centers on Earth. 
The space station's menu repeats every eight days and includes hundreds of types of foods and beverages. Getting enough energy, vitamins and minerals is key to counter the effects of microgravity on their bodies. Zvezda also houses the computers that control the orbital position of the whole space station. We will now leave through Zarya. Life in space also means living with a distinct lack of space, and keeping everything in place requires a lot of planning and crew time. There are storage places everywhere, behind every wall and in every corner. Going back towards the American and European modules, we need to fly through a special mating adapter that provides a connection between the different designs of the docking ports. Eventually, we're back in Unity. And this is Destiny again, the American lab. We'll leave now and go back into space. Back in the vacuum, we are again face to face with the beauty and fragility of our planet. From the space station, we're learning every day, not only about life in space, but also about how to improve life on Earth. The International Space Station is also a stepping stone to further human exploration of the Moon, Mars and beyond. Enjoy the views and thanks for joining us on our space trip.